don't underestimate your voice and the impact of your activism in getting government to do the right thing. Uh, and so I, I just want to emphasize that. I voted to say replace diesel buses and diesel trucks er as early as possible. And, um, but the, the other thing is um, there are communities like ours that are more impacted than many other communities. If you think about it, right, we are the, we're paying the health, ben the health cost of supplying fuel to the state. My my future is on the line. My kids' right. futures, my nephews' futures, y'all's futures are on the line. My nephew is two years old. He will never know an, a, a gas car. He right. will only know electric cars. Right. He will only know solar power panels right. on houses. He will only know electric buses. Like that is happening now. Uh, to the variety of different issues that we have here in Richmond environmentally. Um, you know, one of the things that you that you spoke about was uh, the issue of shoreline contamination. One of uh, uh, part of the work that I do is working with the Richmond Shoreline Alliance on trying to um, uh, kind of mobilize folks who live in Crescent Park uh, around the cleanup of a toxic waste site. We are seeing, fortunately, I think, both in government and in community, um, a greater recognition to give voices to environmental justice communities and to have that be a larger, uh, to incorporate that into the decision making. It will not come without struggle, um, but um, it is a shift that is happening because of, I think, the strong local environmental justice leadership.